So this is technically where chapter 13 begins. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about compounds in aqueous solution. Now, we know that aqueous means dissolved in water. So what we're going to be dealing with here is we're going to be dealing with solutions or, or salts that are dissolved in water. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about dissociation in uh, one of our previous discussions. And dissociation is when a compound that is made of ions dissolves in water. And I showed you the process of dissociation uh, in a video in class. What happens is you end up with the negatively charged oxygen coming into contact with the positively charged, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, the positively charged, the negatively charged ends of the oxygen will come into contact with the positive sodium and the positive charge or the positive poles on these hydrogens, these partial positives, will come into contact with the chlorine. What happens is these water molecules surround them and break it apart. That's the process of dissociation. Now, what actually happens? Well, if you take, we've looked at the previous chapter, you take NaCl, arrow, NaCl solid, arrow yields sodium ions plus uh, chlorine ions. Now, let's do let's look at what an example problem might look like for a dissociation. It says write the equation for dissolution of aluminum sulfate in water. <clears throat> How many moles of aluminum ions and sulfate ions are produced by dissolving one mole of aluminum sulfate? What is the total number <clears throat> of moles of ions produced by dissolving one little, one mole of aluminum sulfate? Okay? one mole of aluminum sulfate. So, it says we are given the amount of solute, we have one mole of aluminum sulfate, and where the solvent is our water. Our unknowns from the previous problem says the moles of aluminum ions and the sulfate ions. The other unknown is the total number of moles of solute ions produced. So we look at our questions. Now, so the solution, the first thing we have to do is write a dissociation equation or write the reaction. We have aluminum sulfate solid dissolving with water to produce two aluminum cations, two, two moles of aqueous aluminum plus three moles of aqueous sulfate. The three comes from the subscript and the two comes from the subscript for the aluminum. Three for the sulfate, two for the aluminum. Okay? Now, it says so that's going to be our first, so that's, so that's our um, dissociation problem. Now, it says if we dissociate one mole of aluminum sulfate, we're going to produce two moles of aluminum and three moles of sulfate ions. Okay, so the total number of ions is equal to two moles of aluminum ions plus three moles of the sulfate ions gives us five moles of solute ions total. Okay. Now, had this been two, had they given us two up here, we would have had four and uh, six respectively for a total of ten. Do you see how that kind of works? It's just really simple. We're taking this solid uh, compound, or salt as they refer to, dissolving it in water. Okay, When we dissolve it in water, it makes it AQ. When it makes it aqueous, that means that the ions exist as aluminum ions and sulfate ions separately. Okay. Now, precipitation reactions. We have uh, several general classes of reactions that we're talking about. Redox, precipitation, several things like that. Now, precipitation reactions are simply double replacement reactions that form a precipitate. Okay, in which one of the products is considered insoluble, thus precipitating out. Now, how do we decide if a compound is soluble or not? And I've got several examples here. Uh, nickel chloride, potassium permanganate, copper sulfate, they're all soluble, as well as lead nitrate. Notice they're all soluble. Okay, you see nothing down at the bottom, really. Um, even color dispersed throughout. Now, silver chloride and cadmium sulfate are insoluble. They form a precipitate. They come out down at the bottom of the test tube. Okay? Now, how do we determine solubility? The solubility rules. Okay? And these solubility rules you need to commit to memory. The solubility rules you need to commit to memory. Okay? 
The first solubility rule is that potassium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium compounds are soluble in water. Nitrates, acetates, and chlorates are also soluble. Most chlorides are soluble, except those of silver, mercury-1, and lead. Lead-2 chloride is soluble if the water is really hot. Okay. The fourth solubility rule is that most sulfates are soluble except for those of barium, calcium, mercury, strontium, and lead. Okay. Most carbonates, phosphates, and silicates are insoluble except for those of sodium, potassium, and ammonium. And number six says most sulfides are insoluble except for those of calcium, strontium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Okay, so these are our solubility rules. So let's apply these solubility rules. Okay, I've got three compounds. Potassium bromide, lead carbonate, and ammonium hydroxide. We need to determine if they are soluble or insoluble, and how do we write that in a chemical reaction? Okay, potassium bromide, well, potassium is always soluble. Okay, so we know that this one is soluble. Lead carbonate. Well, carbonates are typically insoluble, so this compound would be insoluble. Ammonium hydroxide, ammonium compounds are typically soluble. Now, how do we indicate what is soluble and insoluble in a chemical reaction? This is where the subscripts come into play. Potassium bromide, since it's soluble in water, we put AQ. This is where the aqueous come from, comes from. Okay. Lead carbonate, since it is insoluble, it is known, it gets an S. That means it's going to be solid. Okay? Ammonium hydroxide is soluble, so what do you think it's going to get? A little AQ. Okay? Now, we will practice this a good bit in class, but this is just general as to how you predict the solubility reactions. We have to use those solubility rules. Okay, net ionic equations is the last thing we need to talk about uh, in this this section. Net ionic equation or reactions of ions in aqueous solution are usually represented by net ionic equations. A net ionic equation includes only compounds and ions that undergo a chemical change in a reaction. Ions that do not take part in the reaction and are found on both sides of the reaction are called spectator ions. Spectator ions. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. Let's write a net ionic equation. All right, for, before we can write a net ionic equation, we must first start off with a molecular equation. And a molecular equation is what we've been using all year um, long. Molecular equations have to be balanced. Okay, notice this one is balanced. Um, before we can write an ionic equation. Now, we need to predict the solubilities. We have to have complete molecular equations, so we need to predict the solubilities. Cadmium nitrate, is it soluble or insoluble? Well, it's soluble because most nitrates are soluble, so it's going to be aqueous. Ammonium sulfide, well, ammonium is soluble, so this is going to be aqueous. Cadmium sulfate, okay, sulfates are generally, or I mean, cadmium sulfide, sulfides are generally insoluble, so that's going to be a solid. And ammonium nitrate, ammonium and nitrate are both soluble, so that's going to be AQ. Okay? Now, how do we write a net ionic equation? Well, anything that is AQ, we write it as dissociated. So here is the complete ionic equation. Okay? Got cadmium 2 plus aqueous plus nitrate minus, and that's we have two of those. Okay, aqueous. Now, when we dissociate, we must remember to keep their charges. Okay, then we have ammonium. We have two ammoniums plus, and it's aqueous. Then two sulfur um, anions, sulfide anions, um, S, and it's a two minus is its charge, and it's aqueous. Produces cadmium sulfide. Now, since cadmium sulfide's state of matter or phase is solid, we cannot dissociate. We can't break it up like we can the aqueous things. It has to stay together. Okay? Plus ammonium, which is AQ, 
plus nitrate in O3, which is one minus, okay, which is also A cubed. Now, how do we get the complete, ion, or the net ionic equation? The complete ionic equation is everything. The net ionic equation is just the things that do not appear on both sides. We have to look and see which things or which uh, ions appear on both sides of the arrow. Nitrate appears on both sides of the arrow, so we can cross it out. It's not in our ionic net ionic equation. Cadmium, does it appear on both sides? Not as cadmium 2 plus aqueous. It has to look exactly like this on both sides. Okay. Ammonium appears on both sides, so we cross it out. Then sulfide does not appear on both sides uh, like this. So our net ionic equation, or just the things that we're interested in, is going to be cadmium 2 plus aqueous plus sulfur 2 minus aqueous yields cadmium sulfate. This is our net ionic equation. Just like your net pay on your paycheck is how much money you get after they take all of this stuff out. This is like your net ionic equation. Now, things that we crossed out are referred to as spectator ions spectator ions okay and that wraps this section up